Hello fellow 3D enthusiast, my name is Ian and this is a tutorial in which you can learn the basics of decal machine. So this is a paid add-on, you can find it on the blender market, I think it's usually about $40. And I'm just going to go over the basics real quick and show you how awesome this is and show you how to use it if you have it and you don't know how to use it yet. But before we go on, real quick I'd like to mention that I've created a completely free hydraulic kit bash element pack for you. So these work best with Blender, and there's a link for them in the description. So the main hotkey you're going to be using with this is D, and that will open up this pie menu here. You have all these decals here that you can choose from. So to add a decal to an object, it's a good idea to select that object, and then you hit D, and then you can select one of these objects just to put on. If we zoom in here, you can see this is actually a 3D decal, and it's just a plane in the mesh, but when you're rendering it, you can see it's got three dimensions, which is really sweet. Another really cool thing about it is the material will match up with whatever object you put it onto. So if I go into material preview here, and I select this object here, and I hit D and I add in one of those, or one of these, let's say, you can look and see that the beveling around it has actually turned blue, so that matches up really nicely. Another really cool thing is when you add one to a seam, like here. Let's just keep using different ones to sort of show them off. Okay, so I've got this here. I'm going to rotate it a little bit. And just to snap it to an object, if you hit control, that will automatically rotate it correctly. But say I want to put one around here. If you look on the side here, you can see that's sort of warping off to the side. It's not quite what we want. So if you hit D, you can hit project, and before you hit this, make sure that you have it in the right position, because it will lock off the position after you do that. But once you hit D, it will sort of project it down onto the object, and you can see it fits the curve really nicely, and yeah, it sticks. You'll notice here, one of the problems you sometimes run into is it sort of clips with the mesh that you're trying to stick it to, and when you get that error, you can hit D and hit adjust, and that will move it out or in accordingly. So you can just move that out until you're not getting that problem anymore. Select the objects and project them so that they fit the curve of the sphere. So that's pretty nice, but say you wanted these to be blue, you want the material of the inside metallic thing to be a different material. If you hit D, you can hit V or match, and that will give you this little thingy here. It's kind of hard to see, but basically you can toggle either the outside that's sort of matching up with the sphere that it's projected onto or the inside material. So by default, the middle is the one that you're changing. You can scroll up and down to get these different materials going on. We've got our blue material from over here. And when you find something you like, you can just click. But say you want the outside to be a little bit different, you can hit D and V match again and hit toggle D, and then to change the outside material, it says you need to hit shift and scroll up or down. And we've got the outside material changing pretty nicely. So I kind of like it like this. I'm just going to leave it there for now. Now this library is pretty great and all. It's got a lot of really nice parts, and you can just grab them and put them wherever you like. Let's say you did put one in the middle of nowhere like I just did to get the secondary material to match up with the material of the object that you just stuck it to. You can hit D and then reapply, and that will make everything work out for you. See the edge is white like the cube now. And if we dropped it on the other cube here, we can just hit D and adjust the distance off of the object and reapply it again. And now it's stuck to this blue one. And you can see they actually parent to the object, so you don't have to worry about anything going off in the blue. Another thing you can adjust when you hit D by clicking adjust is the depth of the 3D textures. Right now I'm affecting the position, but if I hit X, that will put it back where I wanted it. And I can hit E. You can see we have a little cheat sheet over here, but once I drag it after hitting E, the depth is changing quite a bit. So if you want deeper decals, you can do that. I find that the deeper it gets, the less realistic it looks. So I like to keep it a little bit more shallow than that. And now you can see my edges are kind of sticking off the sides. So I'm going to project this onto the object. D, project. And there we go. 
it's nice and flush with the object. Okay, so this library of decals is nice, but if you want to expand this, you can actually create your own decals. And I've made a super basic one here, which you can see if I hit reapply, that will merge in there. And you can see this decal is super basic. I found that when I was trying to start doing it, I was creating really complicated decals, and those didn't seem to work out quite as well as when you're doing a little bit more simple decals. And obviously they can get pretty complex, but I guess it's something you have to experiment with. But let me show you really quick how I created my own decal here. So it's a good idea to start with a plane. So that's what I've done here. And I'm just going to hop into edit mode and extrude that inward and extrude it downward. So we have this basic little dip here. I'm going to bevel these edges a little bit. And that's the really cool thing about decal machine is you can create decals that have a lot of vertices, but they don't actually take up any when you turn them into decals. So I'm going to make sure that the edges of my plane are just still square, and I'm going to bevel the insides only. Another good thing to keep in mind is that your origin should be flush with the point where you want it to stick onto the object, so like the outside rim here. And also decals tend to look better when they're going inwards rather than when they're popping out. But I'm going to shade this smooth real quick, and then I'm going to hop into the end panel over here and go down to machine here. I'm going to collapse this and just look at the decal creation tab real quick. So here where it says create simple decal, you'll probably see something else. I think it needs something extra that you need to download, but it's pretty simple to just download that. It's a button. Once you do that, you can hit create simple decal and it'll take a second. And we've got this plane here which has the right alpha and everything. That's pretty sweet. It's got nice depth going. And you can just grab that and put it on your objects. I'm going to hit reapply. And that will select the material to be correct. And it's looking kind of wonky over here. But if you scale it down a little bit, I think that will fix the problem just because the edge was going over the side of the cube. But look at that, it's pretty cool. Now once you've created this decal, it actually needs to go into your library. See if we hit D and look at my decals, it's not there yet. So with this decal that we just created selected, if you just hit this little load instant decals and select it, I can select my other one too. But if I select this, you can see the little window here that says add to library. And you can give it a thumbnail color and name it. and then hit add decal to library. Now once you add it to the library, it should be in here. Yep, there it is. So I'm just going to go over to my blue cube here and add in this new decal that we just created. Don't forget to grab it and hit control to make sure it snaps to the right areas if you want that. And I kind of like the look of this one on the rim here, so I'm just going to duplicate this a few times and get a few of those. Let's do two for now. Going to make sure that it's above the surface by hitting adjust and then project. Oof. Let's hit adjust again just to make that, see if that works out a little better. There we go. Nice. Now our custom decal is applied and hey, that looks pretty good. So that's pretty much it. Decal Machine is an amazing add-on. I haven't really done a whole lot with it yet, but I can see the potential is really amazing, and I would certainly recommend it. I hope you found this helpful, and I'll catch you again next week. Cheers!